second inversion, the middle note goes up an octave. And minor, the same thing. sounds you should know by memory. I should be able to play for you and you can sing it right back to me and tell me what it was. Really uh, the proper study of music that's to learn the tools. Harmony, meter and rhythm. They're the tools with which to create. The rest is really up to the individual. It's uh, inevitable that music is going to grow any further, that it's going to follow lines of logic that start 2,000 years ago. You can't eliminate the history of music. It's a process. It grows. That's all. So I'm taking part in it now. It's, it's going on. norske musikere, å få spille med Vårn Mars, det er en det er en kontinuerlig læringsprosess, hele tiden Har du gjort dette før? Stand around a piano, all you and write music? <laughs> well, from time to time, yes Vårn Mars, han er jo ved siden av at han er en fantastisk musiker, så er han jo en like fantastisk pedagog og han, han underviser ikke så ofte i klasser, men eh, på Trøndelag Musikkonservatorium synes han de norske studentene var svært bra. Altså. Han ville jo for, for det første høre dem, så han samtidig spiller sammen med dem, ikke minst. Og da får han en mängd information om hur han ska undervisa och så säkert.
musicians looking for an education now. The 20-year-olds today, the generation after rock and roll, they get more and more uh, college educations in jazz. It's available more and more on a college level. But that's the end of it. They go through college and they uh, go into society and there's no place. I mean, are the kids supposed to go out and finance jobs for themselves? Or is somebody supposed to give them an opportunity to perform? It's improvising, you see. The situations are always improvised. I'm getting to know five Norwegian students. You know, it's a getting to know each other process. If we had uh, all of the opportunity we needed, we'd be together for months and years. All right, we're going to do a little review of harmony. We have to get to this sooner or later. Now, all conventional harmony is built on the major and the minor scale. And by the way, we got to have questions anytime you feel like it, mm -hmm. anything at all, not just this subject. We're going to have three days together. Sooner or later, we're going to go over the uh, rudiments of music as they apply uh, not to composition, but to improvisation. That'll be harmony, meter, and rhythm. Now, harmony, I need to hear the major scale. Sing me a major scale. We've got to do sing. this vocally, yes. We're going to sing all do, this. Do, 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 do. All right, a harmonic minor scale. Do, 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 do. That was the natural minor. Uh. <clears throat> the harmonic. Do, 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 do. No, that wasn't it either. It's flat three, flat six. Ba 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 di ba di 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 ba di da 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 da. Harmonic minor. Sing me harmonic minor. Do 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 di do. Do 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 di do. That's the harmonic minor. Hmm. Now in. Uh, in composition, those are the two scales that are used uh, to build chords. To be well trained, we need to actually be able to perform our subject. It's not enough to understand the structure of harmony. It's necessary if we're going to improvise to be actually able to perform. Now we start with two-part harmony, which is a matter of training ourselves to sing thirds first of all, up and down the major scale, the very familiar sound. Ba di da 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 da And the harmonic minor scale. Ba da da di da di da 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 bi ba di ba di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da di da da. Now, just for fun, let's see where some of you are at with that. Do it as slow as you like. It's all that you're looking for is the pitch. Training your ear is a matter of singing the pitch to your own ear. As a matter of fact, you literally train your ear to measure distance between tones. Now, Stein, I want to hear you sing. Can you yeah. sing the thirds? One, three, two, okay. four. 
Good. And backwards start D. On three. No. Uh, you start up on three, one, da, ba, di, da. It's not your key. It's not your key. No. All right. The fifths. Sing it in unison together. Da 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 flat flat six. seg for å bli musiker i det hele tatt. Men eh, så traff hun da Lenny til stand og ble elev av han. Og eh, de ble jo veldig influert av hans måte å tenke på, men samtidig ga til stand om elevene sine en svært stor grad av personlig frihet. Det man skal lære, det er grunnlaget, og Etter at man har gjort det, så er det hver musikers eget valg hva man vil gjøre med det. Lenny... He really had it covered. This, as talking about the substance of music, just the sheer logic of taking harmony a step further, meter and rhythm steps further, where can you go and still remain musical?
forestilling her i Norge om at det ikke går an å lære det å spille jazz. På et sett er det riktig, men på et annet sett er det jo tøv, altså. For altså, det vil jo si det samme som at det ikke går an å lære å bli snekker, ikke går an å lære å bli rødlegger, egentlig. For å kunne gjøre noe som helst, så må man ha et eller annet faglig grunnlag. Og disse amerikanske musikerne, spesielt de litt eldre, de er skikkelige fagfolk, altså. De kan sine akkorder, de kan sine melodier, de kan sin rytme, og det er veldig viktig at det undervises i den kunnskapen, altså. Now, I wanted to get into this anyway. Uh, how to teach yourself the chords to a song. And in fact, uh, since you sound so good as a group uh, anyway, it would be in your own interest all to learn the same harmony for a song you're going to improvise. Mm. At least uh, the basic changes you should agree on. And uh, what happens after that is, you know, anything can happen after that. But um, how are you going to... Uh, if we play a melody that uh, someone heard on a record or find mm. uh, any place, but how can you know what are the basic chords on chord changes on this song? Uh, well, there are two ways. Uh, either you take the original composer's harmony and uh, agree on it amongst yourselves mm. and teach it to yourselves, or you rewrite the harmony your own way. Mm. But you see, what's going to be important to you as a band is that you're all thinking the same harmony, the same chords. For myself, I like the simplest basic harmony that everybody can agree on and then improvise the actual use of the chord. However, uh, rather than have that all written out as a complicated, altered chord, be thinking uh, G7 among yourselves, but improvise the uh, alterations, you see. That's my idea of uh, the best use of uh, harmony or chords in improvising. Don't have it too complicated. Have it rather simple, but uh, agreed upon. At least all the tonic and dominant chords. And then improvise from there. That, that came up a little this morning. You know? that uh, uh, we fall into set ways of playing a certain dominant chord. Yes. But it's actually more fun to leave it open so that, the, that uh, the next time you come to bar nine dominant, you can play it a different way. Hmm. We do it instinctively anyway. Hmm. Uh, it's just best to have that in mind, that nobody's going to be required to play uh, uh, the dominant bar the same way every time. First of all, the, the group, if they're going to play the together, together have to function together. They all have to have more or less equal knowledge. It's been really 30 years since there's been any major development in jazz, I think. Nothing's happened. There's no maturing of the music that I heard in 1950. And yet, it's uh, opened up a really a great potential. Bebop did. Not to mention Lenny. Bebop was a very big part of the solist and solist's exponering. And in the beginning of the 50s, it started to get more and more. Instead of that, the band tried to play as well as possible on a completely equal basis. Graden av kvalitet i samspillet, det er der det ugjorte ligger nå, altså. To me, some of the best ensemble playing is still Charlie Parker in 1947. The groups he had in, Bud Powell, Max Roach, Fats Navarro. Some of the best music I ever played. Thank you. 
Det som er mest spennende for meg i hvert fall er at denne typen jazz er på sitt beste totalt improvisert. Man har et grunnlag man har blitt enig om, man har et tempo, man har en taktart, man har et sett akkorder og en melodi. Og ut fra det kan hva som helst skje egentlig. Altså. Og det som er eh, drømmen, vet du, det er at et orkester skal kunne gå opp på en scene og improvisere form, harmoni, rytme og meter. Og at det skal bli like bra som det som en komponist gjør for å måte papir i noen år. Altså. Det er det som er målet. Uh, that's the uh, music of the future, as far as I know. That's what's left to do in jazz. I have the whole group trained to feel polyrhythms and these meters, meters across the bar line, mixed meters. Two meters at once is what it is. If everyone's trained to feel them, then there is a new level of complexity available in improvisation. And it's just a logical extension of the existing structure. This is the subject of rhythm organized uh, in a particular way where you may teach it to yourself tapping. Now the simple rhythmic relations are the relations that divide the beat into halves, into three parts, and into four parts. It's eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and sixteenth notes. So starting at the simplest level, uh, four against one, you tap it with every combination of the hands and feet. Uh, uh, I think we'll start with you. So left hand, left foot, tap four against one. And reverse it. Then the other side, same thing. back to your hand though because your hand is still late. Listen to the uh, one, how it falls exactly on and. One, two, and three. One thing is this study of harmony and accord progression that will lead to a total freedom in relation to that. A whole other side of this that Lenny Tristano var veldig opptatt av, det var rytmisk frihet. Tap it uh, fast once, uh, just to get the, uh, the feeling of a rhythm on top of a rhythm. All right, you feel the rhythm on top of a rhythm? go through this again but right now let's take a look at uh, the next one three against two och där med så tränte han sina elever helt kons konsekvent i det som man kan kalla polyrytmer alltså tänka flera rytmer på uh, en gång och så skulle man vara i stånd till och kunna ta en melodisk fras och börja den var som helst i takten good can you do it backwards um. nej Det er jo et helt treningssystem for dette her, sånn som vi ser. That's correct for the foot and hand. At man har et grunnlag for rytmisk variasjon, som da er minst like stort som grunnlaget for harmonisk variasjon. Where is the quarter note? That sounds right, but I can't tell. Start the quarter note. All right, uh, you understand uh, the training part of this is, tra is, uh, is uh, training your hands and feet uh, to do these in every combination. The meter part of it is separate. 
after you, after you can tap it every which way. Uh, you uh, proceed to add meter to each of the rhythms. Now, the one we just did. Uh, speak meter with uh, the quarter note first, which is your foot. That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Your voice is behind your foot. Right? One, two, three. It's four. still behind. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. No, no, no. Four. Not, well, <laughs> now get this right. Start with one. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one, two, three. I uh, consider one, two, three, doing classroom work. One, two, three, Ordinarily, I teach privately. One, two, three, I get a little tired of saying the five, same things over and over again. It's true, to individual students. Uh, and, you know, teaching. I've done enough teaching. I could. Uh, uh, just as easily perform. But actually, you get up on a bandstand and wonder, uh, am I going to live my life like this on the edge of uncertainty? But it seems to be part of uh, the life of an improvising musician, to live exactly there, right on the edge of not knowing what's going to happen next. ¶¶